Hey everybody, my name is Jay. I am a senior cloud ops advocate with Microsoft. And today what we're going to do is talk about how to rapidly build uh, a number of servers using just uh, the automation code that you get right out of the Microsoft Azure portal. We won't need to write any additional code. We won't need to use any additional software. We're just going to use uh, the Azure portal. We're going to uh, access a uh, a parameter uh, template we're going to make some modifications to that parameter template and then what we'll do is we'll just launch a new machine so the really easy part about this is that we can start from the portal and then move our way to automating everything um, let's show you how so first we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to resource groups we're going to add a resource group so uh, to add a resource group, what we're gonna do is just give it a name. And the name of it will be, um, I guess it's a Wednesday, so we'll call it a Wednesday. Um, we'll use my subscription and we'll do it here in the US East region. We'll click create and it'll go ahead and create a new region for me called Wednesday, or I should say a new resource group called Wednesday. And this is where we can start adding new resources to build a server. So today, uh, what I'm going to do is I just want to build a Ubuntu server. And with that Ubuntu server, I want to build a secondary one with the exact same configuration and just a different name incremented. Uh, that, that's really it. I don't want to do anything too crazy. I want to just show you how to start working with these templates and the parameters within the templates. So let's go ahead and just pick what our first machine will be. It'll be an Ubuntu server 16.04. Uh, we're going to be using the resource manager. If you want more information to connect to an existing network or something, like that, you, you can use the classic, but that's not part of what we're doing today. We're using resource manager. So we'll create, and then it's going to go through the wizard process of asking me my subscription, J.A. Gord, that's me. Then it's going to ask me the resource group. Let's use the one we just created Wednesday. Uh, we'll give our virtual machine a name and we'll call it wet01. Um, it's just going to be a random name. It's not a big deal. Uh, I don't need any infrastructure redundancy. Um, I'm going to use the standard Ubuntu image. Um, what I'm going to do is go and create a username and password because I don't want you to see my public key. So I'll just use my username as Destro uh, and I'm going to create a very random password. Uh, let's do it here. We'll just keep a VI and we'll type temp pass because in case we want to get back to it later, uh, don't save this obviously on your computer. Don't check it in somewhere. This is just some scratch space for the moment to have a somewhat ridiculously long, silly uh, password. So let's just pop it in here, pop it in there. Cool. So we're not going to need to log in with Azure Active Directory Services. Um, and then what we want to do is we don't want to open this to the world. It doesn't seem really necessary. So what we'll do is we're going to allow no public ports in. We'll take care of that another time. And let's click uh, disks next. All right, so uh, we're just going to use premium SSD. Let's use all the defaults and then let's add an additional disk just in case we want to store some data. Uh, we don't need this much, so let's just set this to 50. Okay, we'll use premium SSD. We'll keep this default name. Uh, we're not going to use a source disk. We're not going to try to image something onto this. It's not necessary. We just want a blank machine. So let's click OK. Uh, so now we have our new LUN that's attached that's going to be part of our VM. Uh, so next, let's go to networking. So what we're going to do is create a virtual network. We're going to uh, have a default subway configure or subnet configuration. Uh, our IP address uh, is going to be named WED01. And then what we want to do is we want a, uh, an advanced security group because we don't want to just allow public ports. So we're going to click advance and there's going to be this group that's created for us and it's DB server. Oh, nope. We want to use this one, WED01. We don't want to use a previously existing group. So we'll just go in there and we don't need accelerated networking and we'll click management. So don't worry about any of these things right now, but if you would like to get more information on them, you can click the I, 
and it'll give you information on where to learn more, such as boot diagnostics or OS guest diagnostics, uh, stuff uh, as far as uh, diagnostics for your storage. Uh, we don't need to worry about the uh, I access and identity uh, management service right now. We're not going to be auto shutting down the machine uh, and we don't need backups. If we wanted all this stuff, we can go back in the future and create it. So let's go to guest config. Um, we're not going to install any extensions, but if we wanted to, we had the opportunity to install a number of different uh, agents and ways to connect uh, this new server to some existing software you might already be using like Chef or Datadog. So we don't need CloudInit. CloudInit's if you want to uh, have some code uh, run at the first time. Say you have a, a packaged uh, bash script that goes and grabs a whole bunch of repositories, adds them, and then uh, app get uh, installs some stuff for you. That would be how you want to, uh, especially if you didn't have, like, say, the chef agent to uh, install via an extension. You might want to do something like that. So we'll go to next. We'll do uh, name, and we'll call it weds01 and then we'll go to review and create so we have all the information oh it's wed01 so let's go previously and we'll just call it wed01 sorry about that review and create so we're going to find out all the information that we have about this new server that we want and it's kind of going to be the basis for the machines that we're going to build next and that's what this area is for so what we're going to do is we're going to go and click download a template for automation and this is going to be really, really useful to us. So you can see right now we've got a template. This template shows us how to actually um, set up automation uh, from our local machine just using, uh, say, the AZ CLI tool or uh, Azure CLI. And then we have all the parameters. So these are the specific things that we want uh, to set as variables so that when you actually uh, launch this automation code, it'll build everything the way you want. Now, we need to increment a few things around the name, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, and then when we want to actually start launching things, they give us a, a, a Bash script, a PowerShell script, a .NET script, or a Ruby script to use to start either embedding it into other software that you have, um, or if you just wanted to do what we're doing and just run it from your command line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this template. I'm going to open it in Finder, and then I want to take this template and I'm going to just put it here on my desktop for now. I'll replace the one that's already there because I've been doing this for a little while today. Uh, great, so let's close this because we don't need this template area anymore. And then what we're going to do is click Create. And so what it's going to do is it's going to start initializing all the information that was created in that template. And it'll start deploying our new uh, uh, virtual machine. So after a few minutes, it'll be finished. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add our IP address into the network security group. So I'll be back with you in just a minute. So it looks like our deployment is complete, as you can see from all here. And you can see all the resources that we wanted uh, were, were, were built for us. Uh, we've got some information about it. Uh, and what we can do is just click go to resource. And now we have information about our server. If we wanted to configure a DNS name, which maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's all about whether or not you want to have a dynamic or a static IP address. So you can go ahead and add, say, WED01, and it will automatically uh, start giving you this fully qualified domain name that will publicly make it accessible. Um, you just have to set your IP to a static. That will mean that it could make some modifications to your uh, your VM, uh, we don't really need to worry about that. We're just going to leave it dynamic. Uh, so uh, to actually SSH into the machine, though, we'll go to connect. We'll clap, grab this. Yes. Now, there's something I noticed, and it kind of bothered me, and it's this. If we go to security... I should say we go to networking. This rule right here. And what does this rule say? It's allowing default SSH into the world, to the internet. I don't want that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a change to that and make it so that the IP I'm coming from, and if we go curl, I can has 
ip.com will return an IP address of where I currently am. So I'm going to take this IP address. I'm going to change the source from any to IP addresses. I'm going to put my IP in a slash 32. I'm going to leave all the other settings as is. And then for the description, I'm just going to put my home IP and then click save. And what it'll do is it'll add a little bit of additional security hardening so that only my IP address will be able to get into these particular servers. That's what I want. So let's get back to the whole automation process because now we can see we've been able to log into this new machine. Let's go back in here, grab the silly password. Cool. So we're in the machine. Uh, we can got, get to the internet. We have uh, our standard uh, internal NAT, so we're all configured uh, and ready to go. But uh, like I said, we want to build an additional server. So what I'm going to do is this. So let's go open up a new terminal, and let's find the template that we went ahead and we downloaded. So I'll unzip this, and then I'm going to just do this. I like doing it this way when they have a funny name at the end, as I like to type CD drag that in there enter let's take a look and there's our deployment script um, our helpers and our actual parameters so what we're going to do is just go into parameters.json so if you don't want to use vi it's completely your decision i just use vi because i'm almost 40. <laughs> so that's really it so what we're going to do is this we don't want to change this particular uh, setting because I want to keep everything with wet one SG. Uh, I want to go everything under one security group. But what I do want to make sure is that wet one uh, is no longer in use by other resources that we create. So we're going to do two things. I'm going to use uh, find and replace within VI. If you have another tool like the VS code or something like that, uh, that's fine. So I've gone ahead and I've updated every single reference to wet01 to wet02. Uh, but I wanna just go back and I'm just gonna modify this back to wet01 because I want everything to be under that security group. Just makes it easier. I've already configured it. There's not much more I have to do. Um, don't worry about this. Uh, it's not gonna overwrite it. And it shouldn't be an issue either. So let's take a look. We've got our address prefixes and everything set up for our subnets, uh, all of our storage requirements, all taken care of. Cool. So let's save the parameters. And now we've got all these different scripts that we can run. Uh, and all they're going to do really is, uh, at least from the bash script, it's just going to use AZCLI, uh, just this and make modifications to your account via that utility. Uh, if you were doing it with, say, Ruby, you'd be using the native API, uh, but the CLI tool seems to work just fine for someone like me who has a lot of experience with Bash and stuff like that. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and click Bash, or I should say type Bash deploy.sh, and now it's going to ask me for some additional information. Really easy to get. We could just go, copy this, paste it, run the bash script again so we'll copy my subscription ID we'll create a new resource and that resource will say call uh, oh well, we already know what the resource group name is it's actually uh, Wednesday so we'll just type sorry Wednesday and then we'll give this machine its own name so we'll call this uh, that one's wet01, so we'll call this wet02. Fair enough. Uh, if we're creating a new resource group, we need to set a location. We're not. We're using the one that we created before, which is US East. So we'll just hit that. And so right now what's going on is it's taking the parameters. Uh-oh, admin password is null. So what does that mean? Let's go back into the parameters.json. Let's grab our shitty password and what we'll do is we'll find password Ooh. and what we'll do is we'll modify the value to include the password that we were using before if you want to use an SSH key you can modify the value uh, to use the SSH key I'm just gonna stick with this password because we're destroying this after a few minutes so We'll try this again. 
we'll bash deploy, grab my subscription ID, resource group Wednesday, wet 02, US East, wait, and you should see it right about here. There you go. So, oh, and I typoed it. Wow, really having a day. That's the fun thing about doing these. The way I do it is that I just kind of roll with it and find the problems and keep going and, and let you see what mistakes I made because you may make some of these same mistakes, whether it's a typo or something like that. It, it's really easy to kind of just be sure you, you watch what you're typing because you can make a mistake here and there. But anyway, uh, we're just going to wait for this and, and it's going to go ahead, uh, execute the parameters against all the information in the template. And by the time it's done, you should have a new server that's ready for you to start working with. So uh, let's just wait a minute. And when we come back, we'll take a look at our new machine. So it looks like our creation of our new resource has been completed. You can see because uh, right in here in the con uh, the terminal that I've got set up for you, uh, you can see all the resources that were created. So here was the AZ CLI line, then the information that's output, including the name, the correlation, uh, everything else. And what we can do is go back home and let's go into resource groups. We'll go to Wednesday. There's wet02, the virtual machine. We'll click on that. We'll see that it is a part of my uh, group. It is attached to the security group that we did. If we go to networking, yep. So here we are with the same security group for that particular interface. And uh, now all we can do is go back. And here's the cool thing I'm gonna show you is that see we're already here on wet01. Uh, let's just SSH to WED02. Yes. We'll grab our password from up here. And there we go. We have WED02. It's up and it's ready for us to start using and combining with WED01 if we're going to build a cluster. If I want to build another machine and say build WED03 or 405, I can just keep running that and incrementing the information within that template. It's done quickly, it's done easily, you didn't have to write any code, you didn't have to use any additional software. Uh, it's really great because sometimes you may need about five or six servers built rapidly and you don't want to do anything uh, in the control panel over and over and over again. Or you just may already have everything built into a set of scripts that you could just run over and over. So what you can do is you could take these and check them into some sort of um, a say GitHub or something like that, making sure that you don't expose any passwords or any keys that you may be keeping in your, uh, your new scripts. But these are really simple ways to build your, uh, your, your infrastructure that you might need quickly without having to uh, you know, put additional overhead into your, uh, I guess, into your practice by not really worrying about using stuff like Puppet or Chef or something like that, all right? Not that there's anything wrong with those pieces of software, they're great, but I'm thinking about how to rapidly build the underlying infrastructure, not really concerning myself with installing everything on yet, uh, on it yet, but we'll get there. So this is kind of the first step in this process. Um, if you have any questions about Azure Resource Manager, uh, you can find this domain here. I'll put this in the YouTube uh, set up there you can get all the resource manager or i should say description uh, on youtube you can also understand the structure and syntax by going to this url and if you want to create and deploy your own custom templates we've got instructions for you right here so thanks a lot if you want to find me i'm pretty easy to find on twi twitter it's uh, twitter.com slash jdestro um, and if you have any other questions about azure feel free to reach out at any time. Thanks a lot for watching today. Uh, it was really cool to do this. Got more coming. Um, keep watching. Thanks.